Hi, I'm Denise Watson. I'm absolutely delighted to be here in Lurgan today at Playing for the Future Academy. And so many kids have come out. It's a cold morning, but they're absolutely loving running about. And the man responsible for coaching today is Keith O'Hara, somebody who I have interviewed in the Irish League a few years ago. But Keith, your experience that you're bringing here to the Academy, um, tell me a bit about your background and how you then got involved with Playing for the Future. I, I first got involved with Playing for the Future um, a brief few years ago, but it was actually attending the, the Craig Avon Cup over at Portadown. Um, my son was playing and I was just speaking to Thomas one day and he asked me would I like to get involved. Yeah. And just sort of a wee phone call over the, the next couple of weekends and that's where it all started. Because it's all about cross-community and getting kids who are younger into football instead of just expecting them maybe in their mid-teens to be able to pick up all the skills. This is like something we'd never seen before in Northern Ireland. Yeah, truthfully. Um, we we were thinking ahead. Like we're now in the process of bringing in 2015. So every we're always thinking ahead. You know, so there's football kids are playing football younger, uh, and they're involved with teams younger. So we're trying to get them in younger, and um, we, we just keep thinking ahead like that. There, obviously, the competition you spoke about the Craig Avon Cup. There's the Belfast Youth Cup as well. So it is expanding. But just how do kids get involved, and how can parents get involved with playing for the future? Uh, well, we do uh, like a recruitment process. We have scouts out on the pitches on, on Saturday mornings all over the country, and they'll go out and sort of like benchmark kids and whatever. And then they'll I suppose speak to parents and invite them to come in for a wee like trial day, and hopefully then they like what they see and, and mm -hmm. they buy into it. And, to see the, the benefits of what football has, you know, just Sunday mornings whenever they may be doing nothing, just extra churches and things. Yeah, because it's all about keeping kids fit as well, and I mean socially as well, getting them involved and mixing with other kids and bringing out that confidence. Yeah, well, again, there's kids there from from all over the, the country, from from Balna Mallard to Lurgan, Portadown, Banbridge, Newry. Uh, so again, they're they're mixing with different people and you know socially that they're. They're getting to know different kids and it's, it's nice, like definitely. Yeah. As a coach, can you recognise a potential Ronaldo or Messi? I think all kids, you know, deep down at, at this age, I'm going to say they've all got potential. Yeah. And, you know, the big thing for them in their in their little careers, I suppose, is discipline and keep doing it and trying to be the best player every single day, every, t every day of the train, whether it's with us yeah. or whether it's with their club. And, you know, you don't have to be the best player at this age mm -hmm. yeah. to progress because it's all, as I say, discipline and mentality. But it's... For these guys, the most important thing is fun and enjoyment, and uh, we provide that within a safe environment, and that's 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 what we do. Like. Yeah, and then the competitive element, obviously, whenever we get the matches, it's been tough during the pandemic, but whenever we get the the competitions and the tournaments up and running again, they have something to play for. We we don't actually like enter our own tournaments. Yeah. So the boys all play for their own clubs okay. in the tournaments that we yeah. provide. Uh, but whenever we do our trips through the, the suppose the, the Easter periods, like where we would go to Manchester and we would bring yeah. specific age groups, and then that, that get the opportunity to play together yeah. and test all their training, I suppose, and, and yeah. while they're competing together. And friendly rivalry, obviously, as well sometimes. Of course, uh, they, listen, yeah, they all sort of play against each other, and every suppose every Sunday morning I ask them how are they getting on, who did you play, yeah. did you play against each other, and you get get a bit of carry on. Oh, that's, that's where you get great. The, the social side of yeah. things. And, but a bit of chat from them. Now talking about the age group thing, just to explain to me, because I'm not absolutely sure about what age they can start at, what age that you can you can sort of finish and move on with a, a career. Well, currently today, for example, in Lurgan here, between the hours of 10 o'clock and 11.30, we'll have 2014s, 2013s, 2012s, and 2011s in for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll get their different bits and pieces within their technical elements and tactical elements, and then their small set of games. Um, so, in the second hour and a half that we do between half eleven and one o'clock, it'll yeah. be the older bracket. It'll be two thousand tens, okay, two thousand nines, and two thousand eights. Yeah, uh, to get this all right. That's yeah. the last, the oldest uh -huh. age group we yeah. have here. Uh, at the minute, as I say, our scouts are out on the pitches out every yeah. every Saturday morning, maybe Friday night, Saturday morning, sometimes during the week. They're looking at the two thousand and fifteens right, already, okay. so we're yeah. sort of earmarking them, yeah, to get them in, and then we'll maybe put four groups in the second hour and a half and yeah. so on and so forth and yeah. four groups in the first hour and a half again. You mentioned about going somewhere like Manchester United. What does that mean to a child of this age to be able to go to a big ground like this, Old Trafford? Listen, it's just, just pure excitement for a kid has to be, isn't it? Um, just to go and see and visit all these these big stadiums and all these top end players. Yeah. Uh, I see John pointing to Leeds over in the background there. <laughs> yes, we were over at Leeds. We yeah. were over actually, before we went to Manchester, to the Manchester Cup last Easter. Yeah. Um, just before COVID, we actually went over and played against Sheffield United. 
and in their academy teams and we went to a Leeds game yeah. and it was it was an exciting trip actually I'm sure. with Thomas's connections we actually got all the players out in the pitch waving the flag on the That's centre great. circle before yeah. the game which was brilliant for them yeah. and absolutely buzzing yeah. so there are wee memories of a lifetime for kids you know just walking out yeah. on the pitch never mind going to the game yeah. walking out the pitch is super yeah um, Thinking ahead, not just, you know, we're always planning ahead. I think we've got trips planned to, to Holland yes, for specific uh-huh. age groups and actually a trip to Spain, to Real yeah. Madrid. So, Fantastic. listen, you can't not want to be involved in that exactly. as a young kid. Yeah. Um, absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I'm going to talk to some parents as well about what impact it's had on their child. But can you see the parents come to you and say, Keith, I really see my child developing. I really see my child coming out of themselves and enjoying football. Truthfully, maybe maybe not as much. We don't maybe have enough conversations with parents, but um, I think deep down they, they have to have that we suppose trust in us to keep developing yeah. them. Uh, yeah. You know, we only get them for an hour and a half, say four times a week. So yeah. You know, yeah yes, you'll see development. You, you'll see bits and pieces and some yeah. coming out. Some quicker than others. And that's yeah. just life. But it's yeah. uh, I think there's a big element of trust and. I love parents whenever they yeah. just stay away and yeah. <laughs> let you do your job. Let, let us do our job and make yeah. sure that, as I said, it's a safe, yeah. fun environment and, yeah. training and the guys are fully committed to, to working hard. Yeah. That's all I like to yeah. see. And what do you love most about being part of Playing for the Future? Just generally, my me, me own kids in it and I, I don't I don't overthink it. I, I was in it from, from a left previous academy that I used to work with. Yeah. And it's just extra contact. Yeah. You know, yeah. Don't, don't overthink it because they, they've all said they've all got potential. Mm-hmm. But um, you just never know. Uh, yeah. It's just uh, get out yeah. the Saturday morning, get the legs stretched, run around, kicking the ball, yeah. football about. You, if you don't love it, you shouldn't be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's as simple as I keep it simple. Yeah. So if anybody's watching this video and they want to get involved, where do they go to? Is there a website? Everything goes through? I think. If you would need to get in contact with us, uh, there's there's website, uh, there's Facebook pages, there's all the Instagram pages. Yeah. Uh, there's there's emails out there. Um, we don't just open it up. Yeah. But if they make contact with us, we can get the scouts to go watch that's their great. kid, and okay. that's where it would start. And then that's where we get to know the name, and then we sort of get a wee peep at them, and then invite them in. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Keith O'Hara. Thank very you good. so much. Thank, thank you. Keith. Thank you.